I'm James Bailey, uh, a pianist, come from South Africa, and yeah, that's me. I started piano lessons because I had a quite strangely very bad hand-eye coordination as a child, and um, I had a big problem with crossing the, the midline in terms of coordination, and they decided, the physiotherapist, that I should have piano lessons because this might help my brain to, to I don't know, work itself out. So I played a lot of crossed hands and just bashed a lot for a while. And um, it helped me so much, the piano, actually in, in writing and getting to become a normal child, that I think I always was a little bit obsessed about the piano. So it was always something I really tried to do. And also because my teacher never thought I'd be a pianist. She let me play things that were far too difficult. So I was always full of passion, but full of wrong notes. and, and um, and yeah, then suddenly at about 16, it, it, I thought I, I can actually do this and I worked really hard and my mother was the opposite really. She was saying, stop playing the piano, you know, go and play outside. We live in Africa in the sun. And, and um, But it was the main driving force was my obsession with music or, or piano, I think. I'm very glad that I found the my niche, I guess, in, in accompanying because after this competition in America I spoke about before, one of the prizes was a concert tour of solo performances and it was, you know, I was so happy to win this thing. But after the tour, I hated it because you're depressed. You play the concert, it goes well, everyone claps. You go back to your hotel room alone, you travel alone and you practice alone. So it's just a really solitary lifestyle. So when I came to London and they, you know, I told them I didn't want to play solo piano, but I wasn't quite sure. I'd never, I played with singers before, but never really understood this world of leader that that really England is has a huge tradition of, and they introduced me to it. And it was just exactly what I wanted to do. You get to play performances and travel together, rehearse together, it's fun, make music together. So yeah, I found what, what made me happy. As an accompanist, I, think, I guess you have to, you learn a lot of diplomatic skills. And uh, it always amazes me, because I work with singers and instrumentalists, whenever you play chamber music, instrumentists are so horrible to each other. They they just direct and say, you know, that sounds awful, or this is that. And and with singers, it's it's not, it, you can't be like that because their instrument is in their body. So if I say that sounds awful, you're actually giving them a direct personal insult. So you have to find ways of, of always encouraging, but trying to, to um, find the best possible result. And also because with singers, they they're creating the sound in their body. They're not actually always aware of how it comes across where the audience sits. Um, so I, we have to, we have many roles as accompanists. We have to be supportive. Sometimes the, the external pair of ears for the singer. Um, but then on stage it becomes a partnership and, and you create this, this performance together. So it's a, it is a wonderful job. I don't think I'd, I'd want it any other way. Playing on stage at La Scala in Milan was was a, a wonderful experience. Also because we arrived late for the for the rehearsal, there was a problem with the flight, and um, we didn't actually realize we were playing on the main stage. We just assumed it would be in a smaller recital hall. And so we rehearsed before, and then they took us to the performance, and we walked on the stage, and I thought, oh my god, we're actually on the stage at La Scala, and there were all these Placido Domingo and all these people were sitting in the in the audience and it was kind of wonderful but also a little bit terrifying. I remember in I think it was in Joburg or Cape Town I was playing on a on an old piano and um, it was a concerto so I had to play quite big and a bass string broke and they don't break very often they're very there's a lot of pressure on it and it makes such a noise when it jumps up that I thought it was a gunshot, because it's feasible in Johannesburg, you can't be shot. Um, so I dived under the piano because <laughs> I thought we were under attack, but it was just the string <laughs> flying out. And everyone panicked because they thought, goodness, what is, <laughs> what is, what is happening? Probably unique to South Africa. <laughs> it's definitely unique. Paranoia, but... Then. Do you have nightmares? Um, not about music, no. About other things, yes, but... It's always being lost or stuck, and something's coming.
working with with lots of people is is interesting and and you you have to be calm and and a calming influence on on people sometimes but uh I can get angry um stupid things make me angry like I don't know the parking shop in Wilston Green when the, when everyone's just so <laughs> so unpleasant and you end up screaming at everyone because that's the atmosphere of the place but uh and I guess South Africans intrinsically don't like to be told what to do because it's a such a crazy country that you're always trying to find your way around the the queue or the <laughs> the system I think like Italy too they have a very good life there but it's it's it comes at a cost it is dangerous so I guess people are people live life to the max they have very good humor I mean if something terrible happens the first thing they do is laugh which is nice um, and they can laugh at themselves which I don't always think British people can but I don't think you should put that on the movie <laughs>